A space anomaly throws an astronaut onto an unknown planet where humans also live, but they are slaves to other beings. We think we should see it. The year 2029. Preparations are underway on the space station Obron for an experiment involving piloting of space modules by monkeys. Captain Leo Davidson is working with a chimpanzee named Pericles, whom he considers to be a truly unique animal. One day, the station crew discovers an unfamiliar electromagnetic anomaly nearby, and the commander sends the module with Pericles to investigate. Despite Leo's strong objections, Leo believes that he should be the one going. Pericles heads towards the anomaly. However, almost immediately, his spacecraft veers off course, and from his pulse rate, it becomes clear that the chimpanzee is afraid of something. Soon, Pericles's craft seems to dissolve into the anomaly. A few minutes later, ignoring the commander's orders. Captain Davidson takes another module and follows Pericles. While crossing the electromagnetic storm, the module loses contact with the Obron and crash lands on a nearby Earth-like planet, sinking into a lake. Leo manages to swim ashore, but the craft sinks to the bottom. Once on land, Leo surveys the surroundings. He finds himself in a real jungle from which half-naked people suddenly emerge, clearly fleeing from someone. Leo runs with them, realizing that the people are being pursued by a group of apes in uniforms. These apes capture the natives, put them into sacks, and chase others in a certain direction. Leo ends up in the heart of the hunt and barely manages to dodge the hooves of a horse, seemingly ridden by one of the higher-ranking apes. He witnesses the pursuers capturing an older man who had tried to help a younger girl caught earlier, but Leo can do nothing and continues to flee. Soon, the human herd is driven out of the forest, and Leo tries to turn back and hide in the woods, but an ape knocks him down. The captured humans are put into cages on wheels, and as Leo regains his senses, he hears the apes talking among themselves, calling him a stinky human. The man is thrown into a communal cage, pulled by a team of men, and they are taken to a city inhabited by apes. Leo tries to talk to his fellow captives, but they remain silent. Meanwhile, small apes mock the captured humans and pelt them with stones. Leo is surprised to see how one of the adult chimpanzees stands up for the humans and drives away the little creatures, for which they call her a human fanatic. Meanwhile, the prisoners are brought to a slave trader named Limbo, an orangutan. The guards rudely separate the elderly man from the girl, and Leo is put into a cage because he's considered defiant, as reported by the inspecting general Thade. It turns out that this group was responsible for the raids on the fruit orchards. The slave trader suggests hanging someone to calm the group down. However, the general does not want to deal with a human defense society which constantly opposes him. The general came to buy a pet for his niece, and she chooses the little girl whom Limbo advises to euthanize when she grows older. Keeping a teenager human at home is extremely dangerous. The little girl is taken out of the cage and handed over to her new owner with a new collar. Watching all of this is Senator Sanders' daughter, Ari, who is deeply saddened by the mistreatment of humans. Meanwhile, Limbo gives the order to begin branding the new slaves. But Ari snatches the branding iron away because she's against torturing humans and throws it aside. Leo immediately reaches out to her, while Limbo expresses a displeasure with the senator's daughter. Ari believes that humans can be taught to live just as well as the apes, and she's ready to prove it. The chimpanzee begins to open the cage when Leo takes her hostage. He quietly asks for her help, and surprised, she buys Leo and one of the native women. Women, ordering them to be taken to her house. However, her father, Senator Sander, is far from happy to see wild humans in his house, especially since he has a formal dinner tonight with General Flade, who is sympathetic to Ari attending. Sander goes to greet the guests and puts the newcomers to work. Leo starts asking questions because he does not understand how the roles of humans and apes have reversed. A girl named Dana doesn't understand where he could come from, and Leo names the place he came from, the USA. Dinner begins. The apes talk about their villas in the tropics when General Flade arrives late due to visiting his sick father. Additionally, there is unrest in the provinces. Humans are reproducing too quickly. Sterilization is very expensive, but action needs to be taken. The general is bloodthirsty in his stance, although Ari tries to prove that human culture is highly advanced. 
The apes recite a prayer of gratitude to the great Simus who created them in his own image and likeness, and Ari confirms that humans also have souls. Upon hearing this, General Thade grabs Leo and forcefully opens his mouth to see where Leo's soul is located. Ari, disappointed, leaves the table. However, the general enters her room and accuses her of loving humans even though they are foolish and dirty and leaves after facing resistance. But in the courtyard, a pair of his warriors inform him about something he needs to see. Meanwhile, Leo and Dana are locked in the cage for the night, but Leo easily unlocks the lock and other inhabitants of the house quickly warn them that it's dangerous to be outside at night due to a curfew for humans. He asks Dana to find the place where they were captured and she agrees, but only if he helps her free her family. Another servant joins them and they head for the exit. At this time, General Thade is being led by his soldiers to the site of the crashed spaceship. Realizing the importance of the discovery, he kills the soldiers to keep the secret. Meanwhile, the escapees reach the cages and Leo opens the latches. Dana is reunited with the family and they run through the city, scattering the rusting apes. In one of the rooms, they see a girl in a cage and Dana takes her with them. Suddenly, there is an alarm. Soldiers surround the homes and the people almost make it outside when they are found by Ari and her servant. Leo asks for their help to escape, promising that he can change the cruelty of this society. Ari remembers a risky path, but it's too dangerous for the little girl to traverse. They leave the child with the household servants and Ari leads the group of the escapees. However, the soldiers notice them. Dana's father engages in a fight with one of the apes, but suddenly General Thade appears and kills him with a knife. The apes know that the humans have gone into a tunnel and are confident that they will soon capture them. Learning that Ari is aiding the escapees enrages the general, but he orders that she and Leo not be harmed while the rest should be killed. Soon, the group reaches the outskirts of the city and arrives at the lake. Leo inadvertently mentions stalking apes, which nearly cost him his life. Ari's enraged servant demonstrates that apes are superior to humans. Leo gets ready to dive to his spacecraft when Ari becomes unexpectedly agitated. It turns out that apes are very much afraid of water. Leo jumps into the water and finds his spacecraft. Dana follows suit but panics upon seeing the bodies of the soldiers killed by the general. Leo helps her out of the water and on the shore adjusts the transmitter he recovered from the bottom. The signal shows that his ship is already on the planet and waiting for him. The group heads towards the spaceship but encounters a group of apes led by Limbo who capture a fleeing boy. Leo scares them off with a shot and takes the slave trader captive. However, Ari's servant snatches the gun from Leo and smashes it, fearing the weapon. At this time, the general demands that the senator declare a state of emergency and grant him absolute power. He promises that he will find and save Ari and free the planet from humans. The senator agrees. Fade initiates the pursuit of the escapees while Leo leads the group into a forbidden area for the apes called Kalima. Ari asks about the lives of apes on Leo's planet and he explains that in his world they are nearly extinct and the remaining ones are used for experiments. Meanwhile, Fade visits his dying father who tells him about prehistoric times when humans ruled the planet, not apes. He orders the breaking of a sphere inside of which an ancient gun has been kept for years, proof of human power. That's why the general needs to find and kill the dangerous Leo before he reaches Kalima. Meanwhile, Leo's group reaches a place where apes play scarecrows to deter people from the sacred Kalima. According to Ari, the supreme being breathed a soul into the first ape, the holy Simus, there. And Simus will appear there again. The signal shows that the Oberon is indeed there and Leo leads his friends forward. But the only path is blocked by an army of apes. Leo suggests crossing the river while it's dark, unaware that the camp has already been alerted to their escape. In the darkness, Leo guides the group to the horses and by launching a signal rocket into the sky to distract the soldiers, he directs the team to ride through the camp, into the water, and on the way, igniting the tents. Ari panics upon seeing the water and falls off the horse, while the apes manage to restrain Leo's steed. Leo also falls to the ground but quickly gets up and runs to the water, grabbing Ari along the way. 
They swim across the river while the apes throw torches and bombs at them. But despite all this, they make it to the other side. In a fit of rage, Thade orders his entire army to assemble and presently leads the pursuit. Meanwhile, the escapees rest by the campfire, and Ari reveals that her servant was once a general in the army but fell victim to conspiracies leading to his replacement by a former friend. She also laments the people who believed in Leo as he will find his friends and leave. In the morning, the group continues their journey and soon discovers the ancient United States Air Force Space Astrophysics Base Oberon. And this is the very forbidden millennium old Kalima. It turns out that during the electromagnetic storm, the captain's module was thrown far into the future. Leo manages to activate the power and find the ship's log, from which he learns that a few days after Pericles and Captain Davidson disappeared, a decision was made to follow them. As a result, the station also crash-landed on the unknown planet, where it was discovered that the apes were much smarter than believed. Under the leadership of the chimpanzee Simus, they started killing humans. Leo realizes that it's all his fault. He goes outside and sees a large number of people who, upon hearing about him, have come to rally under his leadership and fight for their freedom. Initially, Leo tries to convince the people to seek refuge in the mountains as they cannot defeat Thade's forces, but the people refuse to listen. Ari and his servant head to Thade. She has come to be with him if he abandons the plan to destroy the humans. The general is infuriated by her proposal and brands the traitorous daughter of the senator. He then orders her to return to the humans and perish with them. Ari finds Leo and admits that her efforts were in vain. The human admires her care for all life on the planet. Leo contemplates a plan to defeat the apes, recalling the fuel tanks. He decides to lure the apes to them while hiding the humans behind the ship. This is their only chance at victory. Morning arrives and Thade's army advances towards the ship while the humans retreat. Leo's friends ride forward, catching the general's attention, who orders an assault. The humans turn around and charge towards the ship. During the charge, a horse is wounded and a young boy is endangered. Leo rushes to help him and manages to rescue him. Afterwards, he runs to the ship and detonates the fuel tanks. The explosion throws back the first wave of attackers, and upon seeing this, the humans rally to finish off the enemy. Thade throws the second line into the battle, and a bloody battle ensues. Ari's servant encounters his old friend, and both of them, having dropped their weapons, engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Thade, upon seeing Leo, makes his way towards him. He prepares to kill the human when a landing module descends onto the battlefield, and from it emerges the chimpanzee Pericles. All the apes mistake him for Simus himself. Leo embraces his friend, and Pericles joyfully extends his hand to him. But suddenly, Pericles rushes towards the Oberon, with Fade chasing after him. Leo stands in his path, and the general strikes him. Ari rushes to defend the human, but Fade pushes her aside and catches up to Leo inside the station. In the heat of the fight, Fade drops his bag, from which an ancient pistol falls out. Leo picks it up and shoots at the general. However, Fade knocks the weapon away and seizes it himself. He quickly grasps how the gun operates and prepares to shoot Leo's friends who are already coming to help. But the astronaut activates the defense mechanism and Thade finds himself trapped in one of the compartments of the Oberon. Leo tells Thade's assistants that the apes actually originated from the Oberon. Simus was the first murderer. The assistant renounces his former beliefs and leaves the ship. Ari also bids farewell to the general who is raging inside the compartment. Leo finds the frightened Pericles and carries him outside where the apes are already burying the dead. They won't make any inscriptions so that no one can differentiate between the deaths of humans and monkeys. They will mourn altogether. Leo hands Pericles over to Ari when the module signals that it has identified the coordinates of the storm that hurled him into the future. Davidson, bidding farewell to Dana and Ari with a kiss, boards the module and heads back towards the cosmic phenomenon. He arrives back on his Earth, crash landing amidst Washington, D.C., near the Congress building, and approaches the statue of Abraham Lincoln with General Fade's face. The inscription reads that the country owes its freedom and democracy to him. Police cars arrive at the landing site, from which monkeys in blue police uniforms emerge and aim their guns at the criminal, a human. At this point, the quite old film by Tim Burton is still enjoyable to watch. The ape masks are impressive, no graphics, just nature.
And although the apes are made highly human-like, they haven't stopped being primates. They shout and jump just like their wild counterparts. This is where the paradox is revealed. At what stage of evolution does a human stand, given that they themselves originated from apes?